This is I am Merle. I'm a singer, the relationship miracle worker. Welcome to Merle's Pearls of Business Wisdom Podcast. Hi, Anita. You know, I had such a hard time getting on to Facebook Live. I, I'm on, uh, I've just started a podcast, so uh, I th- I, I'll give you different directions as I, as I get them straightened out. But today we're going to talk anyway. We're going to talk about uh, a workplace, workplace situations. Um, uh, you know, some people say you should treat your workplace people, the staff, your colleagues and whatever, uh, like family. And some people say, well, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I think that you should treat, it uh, depends on how you treat your family. I, I think when I say treat your colleagues like family, I mean, you can't throw your family out. Your mother is your mother, your father is your father, your siblings are your siblings. You can uh, you can keep your, a little bit of a distance. You can be not um, really intimate, I mean, personal kind of telling your stories and situations. But you need to be, if it's your family, even if they're, you can say all the bad things about each person, you need to, re- I have to be careful about saying you need to, because you don't need to, but I recommend <laughs> that you um, treat your family with respect. Uh, don't expect from them more than what they can give you. And in that way, it would make sense to treat your business, workplace, family as a family. Uh, I don't, um, some people talk about having uh, a family at work so that they know everything that's going on in, in, in your life. And you uh and they may be people that know what happens in your life before you <laughs> before you know well i i don't i don't think that that makes sense i think there is uh as as respectful and as friendly and as warm uh as you can be with certainly work people that there, there aren't your mother and your father and your sister and your brother. And you can get fired from your job. Your mother can't fire you from being her child, even if she wants to. So I think that's a significant difference between family and business and workplace. But in a good functioning family, where people are respectful of each other. And even though they may not agree with each other, still care about each other. I mean, today, people's feelings are so strong about politics that if you're a Republican or a Democrat, and oh my gosh, a Republican and a Democrat in the same family, oh, there's, you know, all heck breaks loose. But the fact of the matter is there's an easy way around that. Don't discuss politics. (laughs) And if you have people in your family that are of different religions and are really strong about that, don't discuss religion. It's easy. Sometimes when you have someone, either at home or at work, that is open to hearing a different point of view that isn't a name caller and doesn't doesn't bring out your name calling instincts, 
but will listen to you because you will listen to that person. And I mean, listen, uh, listen doesn't mean uh, this to say. Listen means listen. Because other people, even people that you disagree with, even if they don't make sense to you, when you listen to them, you start to understand how they came to that conclusion and how it makes sense for them. That's golden. I have to tell you, if we could get it, it would be awesome. Because how are we all going to agree with each other? It's just not going to happen. And you're smart, and so is the people at work, and so are the people at home. And they have different opinions. So sometimes, like I say, you, you don't have to talk about it. It's a talk about music, talk about theater, talk about movies, talk about the kids, talk about, uh, um, don't talk about other, don't talk about other coworkers. No gossiping, gossiping not allowed. And at work, I, I, at, at your family too, don't be complaining about the other person. If you have an issue with somebody in your family or your workplace, take it to that person. Uh, uh, some things, there's no point to take it to that person because it's not going to change them. But I have to tell you that you really can control to a great extent the environment that you live in. You may not be able to pick the people that are in your environment, but you can pick how you react to them. In, in, in the same way that the grief counselors will help you overcome, well, and, and, and actually you don't overcome the grief of the loss of somebody you care about, but you deal with it. And in the same way, you don't change the person. You just have a different attitude toward her. Uh, well, one of the things uh, that I think a, a lot of time people don't think about is other people when they're really not nice, nasty or whatever, they often have um, bad thoughts, bad th things, and, and they may be in a worse place in their head than you are. So if you could just have some compassion for somebody else who's having issues, and you don't have to, I, I recommend, my quick fix is to give that person a compliment. Give that person a compliment and do it every day. And uh, for at least for a week and take a break and then uh, the following week. And I have to tell you that it makes a difference. Because, 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 no, you're not changing anyone. No, you're not but you're changing their environment. Never mind your environment, you're changing their environment. They're getting an environment that isn't ah, back at you, but a nice pair of shoes. That was a good report you made. Whatever comment that you can make, quick, easy, down and dirty, honest. Has to be honest, has to be authentic. But doesn't it can be what color your shoelaces are is really cool. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be significant. It has to be authentic. And if you give that person, you may have heard me say this before because I've said it before. It's very, very powerful. And it's not only powerful for that person who then 
treats you differently because you're different. That's, that's what you learn is that when you come upon nasty people, you just make dirty eyes back at them. And th that just creates more of the same. So it's a really interesting phenomenon to treat people with respect as if they were your family. Your family isn't always the, your best friends, by the way. Your family is just who they are. And sometimes they're best friends, sometimes they're not. But always, you treat them with respect. You see them once a year, maybe more. It depends on your relationship. But that respect that you give, that uh, just the time uh, that that you offer to somebody else, that kind of feeling, if you give it to your coworkers, even when they're not your buddies, it will change. It will. I, I wish you would try it, and I wish you would report back to me what the difference is. Because I've had people that say, oh my gosh, what a dare, I didn't know. And the magic of it is that if you could change that environment to make it better for that person, therefore for you, it means you were part of the problem in the first place. Interesting. It puts a little bit more responsibility back on you, which is great. I love giving you responsibility because then you're not a victim. If we have control, if it's our fault, we can fix it. That's what's awesome about making a mistake is, oh my gosh, that means I can fix it. So if you take that attitude home and at work, you, you change the world without changing anybody except yourself and how you see things. Try it out please. Meanwhile, Cracking the Relationship Code, it's back down in the background somewhere, uh, is my book. Feel free to buy it and write a little uh, review on it. Uh, if you want to book a session with me, um, a relationshipmiracleworker.com slash slash free session. I'll see you next. Uh, we're going to go podcast, as I said. I think we actually are podcast, but I don't have all the details to give you now. Um, have a fabulous week and I'll see you next week. Bye.